The truth is rarely pure and never simple. People we hold on pedestals. People we admire. Are they infallible? Truly extraordinary? Or are they a sum of their parts, both good and bad? In this world, the truth is neither black nor white. What you will see in this film, what you will discover, may shock, may disappoint, may inspire. Your discretion is advised. Winston, otherwise known as Serpent ZA, began his story in 1980 in the seaside city of Cape Town, South Africa. At the young age of three, his father, a well-known snake charmer, released him into the South African bush to fend for himself in a long-held family tradition of making men out of boys. It was a mere 14 years before young Winston emerged. Now, not only a man, but a master of his environment. Winston had learned to cope with the extreme dangers of Africa and was able to not only harness the skills learned from local tribes, but also their intricate cultural traditions, like carjacking. Through his teens, Winston was able to make a decent living in South Africa's harsh economic climate through the sale of stolen car parts. He did this by releasing venomous snakes into victims' vehicles and then consuming the serpents in order to dispose of any evidence. But there was something that happened out there, something spectacular, yet sinister. Winston had gone to great lengths to cover his tracks and maintain the image that he had worked so hard to build. So, what truly made him into what he is today? The untold story commenced in the very South African bush that made him a man. While on his usual rounds of acquiring rare automobiles through serpentine coercion, Winston chose an unlikely and unlucky target. The South African Yakuza. The name Yakuza is usually synonymous with the Japanese Mafia but few people know of its most intensely violent sect in South Africa. Impressed with his brash courage, the Yakuza spared Winston and showered him with women and guns and allowed him to train with them in secret for five years. They called him Suneku Kingu, or the Snake King. Life for the Yakuza with Winston on board was good, until he decided he had ambitions of his own. 
in order to gain favor with the ever-expansing drug trafficking trade that the Yakuza had in South Africa, Winston was forced to prove himself. No one was the wiser that he was only smoking napkins. Knowing the only way to the top was to seize power, Winston spent the next three years formulating a plan to recruit local South Africans, to unite with him, and to create an army of Kelder Inverners. But how would he unknowingly get so many people on his side to fight for a cause that was so personal, so selfish, a cause to only grow himself and his own power? Winston tried many tactics, like trying to convince his future recruits that he was a high-ranking U.S. Army general. And hosting lavish parties where Winston would provide free-flowing alcohol in order to inebriate his potential followers and, in their suggestive state, get them to join his army. Winston would stay lucid and functional during these gatherings by duping people into thinking he was drinking with them. But in actuality, Winston never consumed a drop. Instead, sipping on his favorite beverage, which was an equal mix of snake venom and Pepto-Bismol. His plan failed, and the non-converted civilian simply used him for his free food and drinks and quickly slithered from his grip. Winston didn't give up. Channeling his newfound Japanese spirit, Winston knew of an elixir much more powerful than free booze, a power that no overweight or socially inept South African could escape from. Anime. It was through the founding of his club, Black Blade Anime, that Winston was able to capture the hearts and imaginations of his countrymen. And through his movie screenings and magazines, he was able to convince his Kelder Inverners who the real Snake King was. It wasn't long before the Yakuza got wind of Winston's ambitions, so his time was short if he was to train his serfs in the art of the serpent. However, Winston's ambitions were quickly crushed as the years of consuming snake venom caught up with him, as was seen in his rapid hair loss. His mental state grew into a fever dream of power and paranoia, and in training his army, Winston didn't allow his men to use firearms, and only allowed them to use martial arts and wooden swords, while he countered with a pistol. After unintentionally murdering his followers, Winston's plan of domination was destroyed, and the Yakuza found out quickly. All of his assets were taken, and the bosses had already begun formulating plans of his capture right from under his nose. Thankfully, Winston had one remaining loyal friend who truly believed in him. Winston had defeated Akito-san in a match of jungle judo. In an ancient tradition, his loyalty was lifelong. Without a cent to their names, Akito-san and Winston would craft a ship from their slew of stolen parts in order to set out to the sea and escape certain death. However, snipers were not far. Convinced that the Snake King had died from a bullet to the head, the Yakuza left the scene immediately. Little did they know, the snake venom that coursed through Winston's veins had also rotted 40% of his brain, and the bullet simply left him with a headache. With their newly constructed ship deemed seaworthy, Akito and Winston took to the vast ocean in search of land free from the grips of the Akuza. China. The Middle Kingdom was no friend of Japan's, and they were certain that they could build again with no trace of their history remaining. As always, stay strong and stay awesome.